I want something that's not justifiable or something I can't rationalize. So if God chooses to give me this, great. I just hope I'm not uh, ignorant enough or arrogant enough or deaf enough that I miss it. So that's all I can be accountable for, is to continue just walk around arms wide open. The, the running joke in my, in my photo journal is uh, I keep coming across either religious signs or religious doors that are locked or say do not enter. And that's a great parallel for, <laughs> for kind of how I feel spiritually. I know I'm a desensitized jerk. I mean, I grew up in a funeral home, and when I was 15 years old, I, uh, part of my chores at the funeral home were to go pick up bodies with no heads on them, suicide and homicide scenes. So I'm, I'm a little desensitized. And if I don't get it in the first little bit, I'm done, I'm gone. So I'm trying desperately, awkwardly, and mm, frustratingly to follow Christ. And I've read, and I've studied, and I've prayed, and I've fasted, and I've got, even gone blind for a week, gave up my eyesight for a week of Lent, trying to understand maybe I'm, I'm, I'm not hearing things, and so if I lose my vision, maybe I could pick up on, on another frequency. I've tried everything. Ret the retreats where you go and uh, don't say a thing for a weekend, that was fun. Uh, anyway, nothing, bopkiss. So sitting down and reading God's Word and people crying over it and even some of our cast members are you know, expressing how in love they are with God's Word. And, eh. My journey with Jesus started because I went to a Christian camp and on a Friday night I was sleep deprived <laughs> and that was when they put the hit on us. Uh, and I thought, wow, if I buy into this uh, Jesus program, all the Jesus people, the staff, are going to really love me. I'm going to get a little bit of attention and I might get an ice cream cone at the end of it because I think it's real, I think it has been real, but the start of it was a teenage thing, you know, on a, at a summer camp, the emotional mountaintop experience. And so I've had to disassemble that uh, for the last 30 years. Actually, as much as I hated the Bedouin experience because I'm a princess and I really like my sleep, I got no sleep last night. We breathed about eight pounds of sand in through the entire night. I got up and walked around in the middle of the night because it was crazy out. Uh, I, I think so far that's been the highlight for me because it was something that connected me with something that the Bible people would have gone through. So, what is this? A this, stick. Yeah, this is for the wood. Say this. Oh, it's going to be something. Yeah. So, is this the kind of job that Joseph would have done? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Except he would have been quicker. We learned uh, how to make a canoe? No, a trough. A trough? Yeah. And what did you do there? I was <laughs> whittling like Jed Clampett. I have no idea what I was doing. It was kind of cool, though, the way they explained it. Good and, stuff. you know, to be doing the sorts of things that, was done, that were done back in the town in the day, you know, could have been the kind of thing that Joseph did. Ah, it's yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah. So but, this is uh, as close to Jesus as I'm going to ever get, I think. All that whittling stuff. It was good. I'm not real handy. Hold out are you, real hope, are you man. handy? I wouldn't say handy, no. No, no. We're, I mean, we, are, we were the two tools in there. That looked easy. Nice. Good job, man. Thank you. Good job. Shukran. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome. It started off, oh, really? We're going to get dressed up and pretend day, right? It was like, uh, you, did you ever play dress up when you were a kid? Uh, let's not go there. <laughs> well, <laughs> anyway, it started off like that, and so I sorry. thought, I thought, oh, you know, but it turned out all right. It was, uh, it was a good day. Really <laughs> I don't know getting, what that was. You're really getting the Jewish thing now. <laughs> but no, uh, work, uh, working with the tools and uh, plowing the field, working with the donkey, actually controlling the donkey, that was fun. I'm just not here to see Israel. I can come fly over and see Israel anytime, hop on a tour bus and away we go. But at this time in my life, there's a spiritual desperation. Canada. 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 Jewish. Eh? Jewish. Uh, no. Mother. Yes. Either there's a God or there's not a God. And I've been going for 30 years thinking that there is a God. Now I'm not so sure.
my heart breaks for the people that are coming because everywhere I see desperation. Notes shoved everywhere, graffiti on walls, and it's not just graffiti, you know, like uh, Bob was here. It, I mean, we're talking desperation. When we came to Bethlehem, we stayed at a guest house, and attached to it was this boy's home. The orphanage was like the perfect Christmas experience, because Christmas for me is more, still more about the kids than anything else. My time at the orphanage was great because uh, you don't uh, you don't need words to to uh, relate to kids. Back home, probably would have been playing football with uh, with my cousins or something like that. So here I'm playing soccer with some Palestinian orphans. Nothing wrong with that. Make them laugh, crack a smile, and then you're good to go.